again everybody and welcome to another edition of Blaine's World, a video guide to the Grand Strand and Myrtle Beach area. My apologies for how long it's taken to make another video. Um, I usually was, would have been wanting to try to do this back in August or September after the season ended. Unfortunately this year after the season ended it didn't end. Um, there was still a lot of traffic on the road even after the kids went back to school and so forth and I was just not able to get out on the road like I want to. Um, I don't want to be doing this when there's too much traffic in the area because of how congested it does get in the summertime and so I just chose not to make any during the summer and was hoping I'd be able to do it sooner. We're taking you to the other Tanger outlet that there is on Highway 501. If you were in Myrtle Beach, you would be getting on Bob Grissom Highway and coming southbound and, excuse me, northbound on Grissom Highway and that turns into International Drive, which is we are on now because I'm coming out of Carolina Forest. And we're getting back onto Highway 31. If you're not sure exactly where we are, you can look at some of my earlier videos and you'll see how to get to Highway 31 from Myrtle Beach North Myrtle Beach area. This is the other Tanger outlet we've got here in town. Uh, most places I've been to, they've only got one outlet. I think Orlando may have a couple of them. There's only one that I know of out in Gatlinburg. They're scattered around the country. But the other one is down here off of Highway 501. And so basically all you're wanting to do is get on Highway 31 and head south till you get on 501 and you'll be taking a right getting off going toward Conway on the 501. This will probably be the last for a while in the series of these videos for getting around the beach. It's going to be winter time soon. I'll try and get out and make a couple more going down to where the state parks are because there's one just past the old Myrtle Beach Air Force Base and the other one is way down um, between Surfside and Myrtle's Inlet. Um, and they're pretty far apart. One of them's almost an hour drive from where I live. And so this winter I'll try and make that one more video also. But we're going to be starting on some of the other ones I was uh, telling you about at the beginning of this series back on January 1st of this year. Um, since it's going to be winter time, I'll be inside a lot. I'm going to start doing the Linux series of videos. Linux is what runs the internet. Most of you may access it from a Windows computer, Windows XP, Windows 8, 10. This stuff, if anybody still uses that one. Um, but the majority of everything on the internet itself, all the big data farms, all the big infrastructure, that Facebook, Google, Amazon, any of those big companies use, all of those are used based on a system called Linux instead of Windows. Everybody accesses buying stuff on Windows. That's the largest desktop operating system. But for the servers that actually run everything on the internet, the biggest majority of that's all run on the Linux operating system. Uh, Linux was originally written, the, the kernel or the core of the part of the operating system was written by a fellow named Linus Torvalds from Helsinki, Finland back in the early 90s. About 10 years after the first, uh, almost to a week's time after the first uh, IBM 5150 PCs first hit the market for public purchase is when Linus developed the Linux kernel. He was the second year, if I remember reading correctly, he was the second year uh, computer science student at the University of Helsinki and wanted something to run on his own computer at home, which was very similar to what the IBM systems were here in America. And the only Unix-like or Linux-like system you could get back then was what the universities in 
the big companies used to run their computers at that time, and it was extremely expensive to purchase. So it was not easy for the common person to be able to acquire. Being a computer science student, he thought he could write the code and create his own at no cost. And once he had the basics of it down, he shared it on the internet for some other people that were in, back then we were called user groups, that could look at postings and download data and programs online the way it was on the telephone lines back then before the internet actually evolved into being. Um, so he shared it with those people in those groups and invited them to make changes or add to it in any way they thought they could and also give feedback of how they liked it and what they could do with it. Here we are on 501 exit, getting off of Highway 31. This is where we're going to be going up to uh, get to the Tanger Outlet Mall. It'll be up here on our right just after we get back on the highway here on 501 and get merged. And this is going to be a fairly short video because that's basically what I wanted to do is just show you where and how to get to this last hangar outlet. That's about the only other area of interest that we get large number of people want to go to. And I've already shown you in a previous video where the hangar outlet in North Myrtle Beach was located uh, on a previous video when we were showing you that as, long, as well as how to get to the south end of North Myrtle Beach going down 31 and getting off at Highway 22. We hope you've enjoyed this set of videos. Like I say, we will continue some, somewhat in getting a couple more of the state parks and a couple things like that done, but there's not a whole lot else I don't believe that will be of interest um, to the majority of people coming here, well, I've tried to cover the areas that most people are going to go to when they're not going to the beach or other alternatives to go to instead of the beach. But we hope you've enjoyed the series. Um, I've gotten some good feedback in the comments and we appreciate it. We'll continue on with some other series, as I said in the original one. We're working on getting the greenhouse closed up now. And I may start shooting some videos of the rocket mass heater we've got in the greenhouse uh, while it's working this winter to give you an idea of what that's about. You can find those online fairly easy on YouTube. There's a lot of people that have built and are building rocket mass heaters for different reasons and purposes. Um, so here's Tanger Outlet on the right-hand side. And like I say, it's very easy to get to. If you keep going out this way, if you come to the beach and you're going on uh, on your way home a lot of people will be going out this way because this is the way Google Maps shows you most of the time or other mapping services if you're going further north though and you're in Myrtle Beach I would suggest you look at my shortcut out of Myrtle Beach video it does show you another way it'll cut a lot of time off especially if you're going anywhere north of um, Lumberton, North Carolina, areas like that on 95 if you're going up that way and the mapping wants you to come out this way to go home, there's a shortcut that'll save you maybe an hour and a half, almost two hours of time and maybe close to 70 miles out of your way. The way the uh, software will map you, you make basically like a big crooked elbow going out to 95 and in the direction that 95 goes up north as it goes further north it goes closer to the coast so you actually are kind of backtracking across territory that you can get to another way a lot easier it's not the main four lane road like this all the way there are some two lane roads and you are out in the country a little bit um, but it's a fairly straight shot and again the video is pretty self explanatory uh, thanks for watching y'all I'm going to be shutting this one off We'll be starting on the Linux video series probably tonight when we get home. I don't know how soon I'll start posting those. I'm going to start off by just showing you uh, the main website where you can go to download the different distributions, as they call them, of Linux. 
unlike Windows, you've got lots of different choices to choose from when you want to try out Linux and see if it's going to be the right system for you. Um, the number one distribution that's been the number one for almost the last, I guess, six or seven years, going on almost eight years now, is Linux Mint. That's what I use currently. Um, I started off in 2003, the first time I downloaded a disk of Linux and tried to install it on my computer and play with it a little bit. It was called Fedora Core 3 at that time. Now I think it's up to Fedora 23. But we'll give you all the details of that on those videos. Uh, I hope it also will be something of interest to you. The main thing is it's free. If you haven't done a Windows 10 upgrade and you don't want to because of the price, it's an alternative to look at. It's simply downloading the software off the internet, burning it onto a CD or a DVD, and installing it on your computer. It costs you nothing. It doesn't have the support that Microsoft has, but most distributions of Linux these days run absolutely fine. You can run 90% of them from what's called a live CD, meaning when you download it and burn it onto that DVD or CD, most of them take a DVD these days because it's a bigger program, but some versions you can still actually put on a CD. But once you burn it onto that CD and install it, uh, put it in your computer, you have an option actually to do what they call running from the live CD, meaning it'll boot up and act just like your operating system. It will run everything from that disk. The only thing you won't be able to do is save any data. Um, but it'll show you what the system's like, how it operates, you'll get the feel of it. And then when you turn off your computer, you're back to your Windows system and you haven't changed anything and you don't have to worry about anything being messed up until you're sure that that's something that you want to give a try to. But it's also a way to look at several different distributions of Linux and see which one is more visually appealing to you and then as you click through and try it out which one seems to have a better workflow and whatever way you plan on using it um, so we'll show you what those different options are and so forth but thanks for watching I appreciate all the comments uh, I appreciate all of you subscribing to my channel um, I'm gonna try and keep adding like I said these Linux videos some uh, aquaponics videos the gardening videos and so forth and if y'all have any other suggestions, if I have any knowledge or skills or ability in that area, I'll be glad to do so uh, in trying to make any other videos you might want created. Y'all have a great day and thanks for watching.